Hey everyone, I am back with another video and today I'll talk about the one and only Whitney Houston. But before I go any further, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Everybody knows Whitney Houston, even if you were in the 80s or in the 2000s. Whitney Houston dominated the charts with her powerful vocals. Everybody knows her songs such as I Wanna Dance With Somebody, How Lime No, Queen of the Night, and lastly, I Will Always Love You. Whitney was a singer, producer, actor, and most importantly, a mother and a daughter. But in this episode, I will not focus on her career, but mainly focus on her personal life. In order to understand Whitney, we have to understand her childhood. Whitney Elizabeth Houston was born in Newark, New Jersey in 1963 to Sissy Houston and John Houston. Sissy was a strict mother and John Houston was the loving one. Sissy vocally trained Whitney and she began to start singing in the church choir and play the piano. At 11 years old, Sissy will take her to the studio while she sings backup for Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight, and Roberta Flack. At age 14, she was singing backup to famous singers like Michael Zager, Chaka Khan, and Lou Rawls. At this age, Michael Houston introduced drunks to Whitney. She attended Mount St. Dominic Academy, and she was the only black girl. According to Dr. Marie Payne, who was a classmate, said Whitney was very mischievous and didn't care if she got in trouble. After that, she met Robin Crawford at summer camp, and they both started a relationship, and at that time, she was modeling and her true passion was singing. Robin and Whitney did everything together and they bonded through codependency. Whitney introduced cocaine and marijuana to her. Their relationship was very gentle and the first time they were intimate was innocent and exploring their sexuality with one another. Their physical relationship lasted for two years and Whitney ended the relationship after her fame began to grow. According to Robin's words, she said Michael and Gary Houston were both cocaine addicts and Sissy Houston was mentally and emotionally abusive to Whitney. Sissy will insult Whitney's looks, clothes, and hair. Sissy's insults destroyed Whitney's self-esteem. Robin also stated that Sissy was jealous of Whitney's success and wanted to control Whitney. During their relationship, they moved in together, but Robin was not allowed to see anybody. Whitney and Jermaine Jackson was having a sexual relationship while he was married. Robin remained loyal to Whitney even though she desperately wanted to be with her. On Whitney's first album, Whitney, the producers at Arisa Records had a problem with her image. They stated that she looked too black and they wanted her to look like Vanessa Williams. It devastated her because she just wanted to be herself. Clive wanted her to be a white generic pop star and perform at concerts that she probably did not want to do. Whitney had to be an American sweetheart to the public and she always had to keep it together and not have flaws. At the beginning of her career, Whitney Houston was pressured by black media to be blacker. Black media had a problem with the fact that she was too white and she was booed at the 1989 Soul Train Music Awards. People were coming for her even though it was not her fault. Whitney was also the breadwinner for her family and her family took advantage of her success. Whatever the family needed money, Whitney was the one to provide. The more successful she got, the more jealous the family became and most importantly, they wanted to control her. At that time, people started to question Whitney's sexuality, especially Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams was the one that exposed her sexuality to the world via her radio station. Whitney was bisexual and as a pop star being part of the LGBT community was a problem. Especially in the 80s when being gay was hard and could affect her career. In an interview with Opera, Sissy Houston Whitney's mother said that she would have been upset if her daughter was homosexual. Keep in mind that Whitney had a complex relationship with her mother, especially when you have a strict and overbearing mother like Sissy. Sissy believed that being gay is a sin. So Whitney had to break up the relationship with Robin, the love of her life to please her mother and to protect her career. Every time an interviewer questioned her sexuality, she had to deny it. She started to date high-profile men like Eddie Murphy, Randall Cunningham, and Michael Jackson. Some say that she had a love triangle with Kelly McGillies and Jodie Foster. Marrying Bobby Brown was the smartest and heartbreaking decision she made. When the media announced that Whitney was marrying Bobby Brown, the world did not approve of their relationship. An American sweetheart marrying a bad boy is not a good look for her image. The media was expecting her to marry a classy man like Denzel Washington and not a ghetto hood rat like Bobby Brown. Whitney married Bobby Brown because she had to prove to the black community that she was one of them. She'd also wanted to hide the fact that she was bisexual because she couldn't live the life that she truly wanted. Whitney and Bobby's marriage was a chaotic mess, with domestic violence, drugs and alcoholism, and the media reminded them of that every time they got a chance. They both cheated on each other, Whitney cheated with Tupac and Bobby Brown cheated on her with multiple women. The good thing that came out of their marriage was Bobby Christina. Bobby was Whitney's greatest accomplishment, which was becoming a mother. The drugs played a huge role in her downfall. Whitney Houston had a drug problem and it was evident. Even though she tried to hide it from us, we knew. Her interview with Diane Sawyer was a prime example of Whitney at her lowest. 
Her infamous crack as whack and her acting bizarre was just plain sad. Her drug addiction got worse when Robin left her and when her father started to steal money from her and then sue her for $1 million. When Whitney was in pain, stressed emotionally and mentally, exhausted or going through domestic abuse with Bobby, cocaine was her escapism and it was the only medicine for her to escape reality. Her marriage was failing, her career was declining, and the media bullied her for her addiction. It has gotten so bad that she lost tremendous weight and her teeth were falling out. When they did an autopsy, they found marijuana, cocaine, Xanax, Flexerol, Benadryl. What really killed her was cocaine and years of having heart disease. The media was brutal to her. The media played a huge role in Whitney Houston's downfall as well. The media made Whitney Houston famous and then they destroyed her. Whitney at the beginning of her career was fresh and new and she was the it girl. Every woman should be or at least that's what the media wanted her to be. But when Whitney began to show flaws, the media began to see that as an opportunity to mock her, such as her disastrous interview with Diane Sawyer. The interview broke the camel's back and everything fell apart and she was seen as a joke. Mad TV and Saturday Night Live made parodies of her as a destitute crackhead who cannot get it together. Whitney was in a dark place and nobody cared. All they wanted was her talent and her money. Everybody wanted a piece of her. And they took and took until there was nothing left of her. Her voice was gone, her money was gone, her marriage was over, and all she had was Bobby, Christina, and drugs. She even did drugs with her daughter and her boyfriend, Nick Gordon. Whitney struggled with not having a mother, so she could be a mother to Bobby Christina. Bobby Brown believes that Nick Gordon was the one that killed Whitney. Bobby said that Nick would provide drugs to Whitney, and on the day of her death, he gave her substance along with cocaine. But she was unresponsive. He placed her in a bathtub and tried to revive her. Bobby Brown indicates that she died of a broken heart, and I agree with him. She would have been fine if she ended up with Robin and stayed true to herself instead of pleasing people and actually going to rehab. Whitney showed the world what a pop star is. Her ability to connect with audiences set dozens of industry records. She was the first artist to have seven consecutive number one hits and the first woman to enter the Billboard 200 at number one with her album Whitney. She earned the longest reigning number one single on the Hot 100 with I Will Always Love You. What many people do not know about her was that she was a great philanthropist. She supports the United Negro Fund, the Children's Diabetes Foundation, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, and various AIDS-related causes. Whitney had it all, beauty, wealth, fame, and success. She was a complete package of a superstar, but that didn't last long. In conclusion, Whitney Houston deserved better. She wanted happiness, but she had internal conflicts that she had to resolve, such as her identity and her drug addiction. Fame and money couldn't solve her problem. And the only person who could solve her problems was Whitney. So, what can we learn from Whitney Houston? We can choose to love ourselves and not let anyone dictate who we are as a person. Rest in peace, Nippy. Okay guys, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and tell me in the comments, which is your favorite Whitney Houston song. Be back with another video.